Tuesday's primary elections were marked by challenges to 19 incumbent legislators, and nearly all of those challenges failed. Several of those challengers were supported by the Sooner Tea Party or Tea Party related groups. So the elections have raised the question of whether the movement has run its course or whether the Tea Party is still a force to be reckoned with in Oklahoma politics. By any measure, it was not a good day for the Sooner Tea Party. Calls to turn out lawmakers who were not considered conservative enough went largely unheeded by voters. Almost all the incumbents who faced challenges from Tea Party-backed candidates prevailed, in some cases by significant margins. Sooner Tea Party co-founder Al Gerhardt admits they were unsuccessful in getting their supporters to the polls on Election Day. It's hard to get our people to follow marching orders. When you have a professional campaign where you focus on a get-out-the-vote effort, which basically means you identify your voters one by one and you get them to the polls. That is how you win elections, and we've, we've never had success at getting our people to follow that template. The Tea Party movement did claim credit for the defeat of incumbent Representative Guy Liebman in House District 82, but efforts to knock off Republican Senators Brian Crane in Tulsa and Clark Jolly in Edmond came up well short. Defeating incumbents is always hard, and when you're outspent, some of those races we were outspent 10 to 1. It's hard to win under those kind of circumstances. University of Oklahoma political science professor Keith Gaddy says being able to attract campaign dollars relates directly to a candidate's perceived electability. You got to have money to win in politics. And it's not at that expensive to run a campaign in Oklahoma. OK, if the voters are with you, you can find the donations and you can win. All right. But Gaddy says the Tea Party's difficulties went deeper than a lack of funding. Most of the times when they challenged an incumbent, they didn't prevail. They didn't prevail in most of the races they ran. And part of the reason is that for most Oklahoma Republican voters, there's not a lot of room to demand that these lawmakers become more conservative. They're more than sufficiently conservative. Despite the losses, Gerhardt maintains the ability to field candidates should be considered a victory of sorts for the movement. And if you look at why we run, we don't necessarily run to, to garrison this government. In other words, to put our people in suits and ties and, and get, them down, get them a job down at the Capitol. That's not the point. The point is to make better government out of it. Gerhardt claims the Tea Party did score a major win in the first congressional district race, where Jim Bridenstine upset incumbent John Sullivan for the Republican nomination. But political analyst Pat McGuigan doubts the movement was much of a factor in Bridenstine's victory. Uh, I think he got there largely on his own merits and then got that last few percentage uh, points by uh, Tea Party, hardcore conservative activists switching some people's impression. McGuigan says political analysts are now reevaluating the movement. Some of us uh, overestimated the uh, strength of the Tea Party for a time, but I want to immediately add that it's important not to swing back completely the other way and underestimate what the Tea Party has appealed to and is continuing to appeal to. Gaddy agrees the movement will continue to exert influence on the Republican Party. When you're confronted with a movement like this that has energy and they've got issue demands and they're inside your party base, you've got to pay attention to them. But that doesn't mean you have to concede everything to them. Gaddy says, however, until the Tea Party can deliver election victories, their impact will remain limited.